the screams of vaporized Nigerian ships abruptly ceased as human war beasts tore through their final formations in mere moments, leaving a deafening silence in the void around Zeta V. Just minutes before, Captain Peter Miller of the UTF Invictus battlecruiser had faced certain annihilation at the hands of Admiral Mira's Nigerian fleet, outnumbered and outgunned. Miller had made the impossible choice to sacrifice his ship and crew to stop the Nigerian superweapon from firing, knowing countless human lives hung in the balance. The UTF forces were on the verge of total defeat in the fierce space battle near the contested frontier planet. Three Nigerian warships had locked onto the Invictus for every human vessel. The reptilian species' technological edge meant their directed energy weapons cut through Miller's deflector screens in seconds. Half his crew lay dead, the other half grimly manning their posts and readying for a final futile salvo as Mira's energy cannon hummed to life, poised to destroy the human fleet in a single shot. Miller's finger hovered over the self-destruct button, awaiting the cannon's firing sequence to commence. He would ram the Invictus straight down the superweapon's blazing muzzle in a last act of defiance, vaporizing his ship to save his species. But in that final fateful instant, new contacts materialized on the battlecruiser's scopes. A small wing of unidentified UTF ships dropped out of hyperspace beyond the Nigean battle line. In the millisecond before Miller's finger depressed the button, he glimpsed the mysterious new vessel's identities and felt a surge of savage joy. The first human war beasts had just joined the battle, and the war would be over in hours. Miller's mouth dropped open as the fleet tactical display revealed the identity of the mysterious ships. UTF Cerberus. He'd heard rumors of a top-secret experimental craft designed as the ultimate Nigerian killer, but never imagined it was real. The Cerberus looked unlike anything he'd ever seen, sleek and predatory. This is Major Jack Reeves of the UTF Cerberus, a familiar gravelly voice crackled over the comm. Heard you could use a hand, Captain Miller. Miller grinned. Reeves had been his toughest instructor at the Naval Academy, a hard-ass marine who accepted nothing less than perfection. Some called him a legend, others a demon. But everyone agreed. When the chips were down, there was no one else you'd rather have on your side. War beasts engaging, Reeves announced. A dozen small craft, no bigger than shuttles, detached from the Cerberus and streaked toward the Nigian fleet. Miller watched mesmerized as they bobbed and weaved through storms of plasma fire with impossible agility. The pilots flew like extensions of their ships, as if operating on pure instinct. The war beasts tore into the Nigerian defenses, ripping apart point defense batteries and shield generators with surgical precision. Genetically enhanced humans, Miller realized, bred for combat, with superhuman reflexes and tactical intelligence. But Admiral Mira adapted quickly. Recognizing the Cerberus as the linchpin, she redirected the full might of her fleet against Reeves's ship. The Cerberus's shields flared, straining to hold back the onslaught. Reeves returned fire, but couldn't break through to support the war beasts. The energy cannon pulsed, nearing full power. They were out of time. In a flash of desperate inspiration, Miller wrenched the Invictus's controls, swinging his crippled ship directly into the path of the Nigerian barrage. Metal screamed and consoles exploded, but the cruiser held together, and the Cerberus was clear. The war beasts struck as one, a single spear thrust into the heart of the enemy fleet. Lieutenant Jensen, the lead pilot, rammed his ship directly into the cannon's reactor. For a frozen instant, nothing happened. In the wake of the war beast's sacrifice, the Invictus limped back to Earth, its hull bearing the scars of battle. Miller paced the bridge, mind churning with the implications of their narrow victory. The Nigerians would be back and stronger than ever. They needed a new strategy, and fast. Miller frowned. Put it through. The view screen flickered to life, revealing a hooded figure against a backdrop of shadows. Captain Miller, my name is Kira. I have information that can help you defeat the Nigerians, but we must meet in person. Come to these coordinates near Zeta-5 and come alone. The message cut off abruptly. Miller's instinct screamed trap, but his gut told him this was too important to ignore. 
he gathered a small team of his most trusted Special Forces operatives and set course for the rendezvous point. The coordinates led to a remote asteroid base, little more than a collection of pressurized domes clinging to a tumbling rock. Miller and his team docked with the airlock, weapons ready. Inside they found Kira waiting, flanked by a handful of Nigene guards. Miller tensed, but Kira held up her hands in a gesture of peace. I am not your enemy, Captain. I represent a resistance movement within the Nigerian Empire, one that opposes our leader's expansionist policies. We want to help you end this war. Miller kept his rifle trained on Kira. Why should I trust you? In response, Kira tapped a command into a holographic display. Schematics sprang to life, detailing a nightmarish fusion of Nigerian and human DNA. These are the Nigerian nightmares, genetically engineered super soldiers designed to counter your war beasts. I have their weaknesses and the location of their training facility on our homeworld. Miller's eyes widened as he studied the data. With this, they could cripple the Nigerians' most devastating weapon before it was ever deployed. But he also knew the UTF Council would never sanction a strike on the Nigerian homeworld. It would be seen as an act of aggression, one that could escalate the conflict beyond control. Time was running out. Kira's intelligence indicated that a massive Nigerian fleet was already en route to Zeta-5, aiming to sever a critical UTF supply line. If they succeeded, the UTF's entire frontier defense network could crumble. Miller's mind raced, searching for a solution. Then it hit him. A desperate plan, but one that might just work. He opened a secure channel to the Cerberus. Major Reeves, I need your help. The plan was audacious, bordering on insane. The Cerberus and its war beasts would launch a diversionary assault on the approaching Nigian fleet, buying time for Miller's team to infiltrate the Nigian homeworld and destroy the nightmare training facility. Reeves's holographic form flickered as he considered the proposal. It's risky as hell, Miller, but I like it. We'll give those scaly bastards a fight they won't soon forget. Miller turned to his team, eyes hard. Gear up, we leave in ten. The Nigerian homeworld loomed before them, a roiling mass of toxic clouds and seething magma flows. Miller's team, with Dr. Chen and Kira in tow, slipped past the orbital defenses in a stolen Nigerian shuttle. The facility rose from the ash like a macabre temple, all jagged angles and pulsing conduits. Miller's team cut through the perimeter defences, EMP devices shorting out the automated gun turrets. Inside was a labyrinth of sterile corridors and pulsing holding cells. They planted the explosives at key structural points, the charges magnetised to resist the punishing heat. Then all hell broke loose. A squad of Nigerian nightmares fell upon them, led by a towering warrior with eyes like molten steel. Captain Zaro, Kara breathed, her brother. The nightmares moved with blinding speed, their genetically enhanced reflexes making them little more than blurs. Miller's team countered with the EMP devices, the pulses shorting out the nightmares' augmentations and leveling the playing field. They fought hand to hand, a desperate melee of slashing claws and shattering bones, Miller grappled with Zaro, the Nijian's strength threatening to overwhelm him. Suddenly Kira was there, pleading with her brother to stand down. Zaro, please, can't you see that Mira is leading our people to ruin? This isn't our way. For a heartbeat, Zaro hesitated, his eyes flickering with doubt. It was all the opening Miller needed. He struck, a precise blow that sent the Nijian crumpling to the ground. Move, Miller shouted, hauling Kira to her feet. They ran, the countdown of the explosives echoing in their ears. They burst from the facility just as the charges detonated, the shockwave hurling them to the ground. The training facility collapsed in on itself, burying the nightmares in a tomb of twisted metal and shattered stone. In the skies above, the Cerberus dueled with the Nigean fleet, the war beasts darting among the enemy ships like avenging angels. They had bought Miller the time he needed, at a terrible cost. Miller dragged himself to his feet, his team rallying around him. They had struck a blow against the Nigians today, but he knew this was only the beginning. The real battle was still to come. Miller's shuttle docked with the Invictus, 
the battered warship's hangar bay a welcome sight after the harrowing mission on the Nijian homeworld. As the ramp lowered, Dr. Chen rushed to greet them, her face etched with worry. Captain, we have a situation, she said, her voice strained. The Cerberus, they've taken heavy losses. A leaden weight settled in Miller's gut as he followed Chen to the bridge, Kira and his team trailing behind. The viewscreen showed the aftermath of the battle, the Cerberus listing heavily, its hull pockmarked with glowing scars. Reeves' face filled the screen, his features grim. Miller, glad to see you made it back, he said, his voice rough with fatigue. We held them off, but it cost us. More than half the war beasts are gone, and the Cerberus is barely holding together. Miller gripped the edge of the console, his knuckles white. What about Mira's fleet? That's the bad news, Reeves replied. Her flagship is leading a second wave of reinforcements. We're in no shape to take them on. Miller's mind raced, searching for a solution. They couldn't outfight Mira, not with their forces depleted. But maybe with Kira's intel, they could outmaneuver her. I have a plan, he said, his voice steady. We infiltrate Mira's flagship, take her out directly. Reeves's eyebrows shot up. That's a hell of a risk, Miller. It's our only shot, Miller countered. Kira knows that ship inside and out. With a small team, we can slip past their defenses and end this war once and for all. Reeves was silent for a long moment, his eyes searching Miller's face. Finally, he nodded. All right, Captain, I'll give you my best war beast pilots. Lieutenant Commander Sarah Thompson will lead them. The infiltration team assembled in the Invictus Armory, checking weapons and gear. Thompson, a lean, hard-eyed woman with close-cropped hair, gave Miller an appraising look. "'I hope you know what you're doing, Captain,' she said, her voice flat. Miller met her gaze. "'So do I, Lieutenant Commander, so do I.' They boarded the captured Nigean shuttle, Kyra taking the controls. Miller felt a flicker of unease as they approached Mira's flagship, the massive vessel filling the viewscreen. Relax, Captain, Kira said, her voice steady. They'll never suspect one of their own. She was right. They glided past the flagship's defenses, the Nigean codes Kira transmitted granting them safe passage. Once inside, they moved quickly, Kira leading them through a maze of corridors. Alarms blared as they neared the bridge, Nigean soldiers pouring into the hallways, Thompson and her war beasts met them head on, their enhanced reflexes and strength making short work of the defenders. They burst onto the bridge, weapons drawn. Mira spun to face them, her eyes widening in surprise. Miller, she hissed, her voice dripping with contempt. I should have known you'd be foolish enough to come here. It's over, Mira, Miller said, his rifle trained on her heart. Surrender and I'll spare your crew. Mira laughed the sound harsh and grating. You still don't understand, do you? This war, it's all been a ploy, a way to weaken the UTF, to bleed you dry. Miller's finger tightened on the trigger. What are you talking about? I've been working with a faction within your own government, Mira said, her lips curling into a cruel smile. Together, we've prolonged this conflict, allowing both sides to profit while your military strength wanes. Miller's blood ran cold. Who? he demanded, his voice shaking with rage. Who would betray their own people like that? Mira's smile widened. Admiral Vincent Blackwell, your mentor, if I'm not mistaken. The name hit Miller like a physical blow. Blackwell, the man who had trained him, molded him into the officer he was today, the man he had trusted above all others. You're lying, he said, but there was no conviction in his words. Am I? Mira asked, her voice silky. Why don't you ask him yourself? I'm sure he'll be quite pleased to see you again. Miller's mind reeled, struggling to process the enormity of Mira's revelation, but he pushed the thoughts aside, focusing on the task at hand. It doesn't matter, he said, his voice hardening. I'm ending this here and now. Mira's hand drifted to her waist, hovering over the hilt of a plasma sword. I think not, Captain. You see, I'm offering you a choice. Join us and take your rightful place at the head of a new order, or die here aboard this ship as it burns around you. 
Miller's finger tightened on the trigger, his aim unwavering. I'll never join you, Mira. I'd rather die than betray my own people. Mira's face contorted with rage. So be it. She moved, her plasma sword leaping into her hand, its blade blazing to life. Miller fired, but Mira was too fast, her sword deflecting the shots with ease. Thompson and her war beasts surged forward, engaging Mira's elite guard in a brutal melee. Miller ducked and wove, trying to find a clear shot, but Mira was a whirlwind of death, her sword cutting down UTF soldiers left and right. Kira leapt into the fray, her own blade clashing against Mira's. The two Nijian women fought with a savage grace, their movements a blur of speed and precision. Miller saw his opening lining up his shot, but at the last moment Mira spun, her sword arcing towards his head. He braced for the impact, knowing he could never dodge in time. But the blow never came. Kira threw herself in front of Miller, her own body taking the hit meant for him. She crumpled to the deck, her blood pooling beneath her. Miller didn't hesitate. He fired, his shots catching Mira in the chest, the shoulder, the leg. She staggered, her sword falling from nerveless fingers. Miller stood over her, his rifle aimed at her head. It's over, Mira. A klaxon blared, red lights flashing. Self-destruct sequence initiated, a computerized voice announced. Destruction in T-minus two minutes. Go, Kira gasped, her voice weak. Leave me, get your people out. Miller hesitated, torn. But he knew she was right. He turned to his team, shouting orders, urging them towards the shuttle bay. They ran, the ship shuddering around them explosions ripping through the halls. They piled into the shuttle, Miller throwing himself into the pilot's seat. He punched the engines, the shuttle leaping forward, racing towards the closing bay doors. They slipped through with seconds to spare, the flagship exploding behind them, a miniature sun blooming in the void. Miller watched the fireball dissipate, his heart heavy. Kira was gone, sacrificing herself to save him. And Mira, for all her cruelty, had taken the secrets of her conspiracy with her to the grave. He turned to Thompson, seeing his own weariness reflected in her eyes. Set a course for Earth, he said, his voice grim. We have a traitor to catch. The Invictus limped into Earth's orbit, its hull scored with the scars of battle. Miller stood on the bridge, his face grim as he prepared to face the UTF Council. The evidence of Admiral Blackwell's treachery weighed heavy in his hand, a data drive containing damning communications between the Admiral and Mira. As Miller strode into the council chambers, the assembled officers fell silent. He laid out his case, presenting the evidence with cold precision. At first, the council members shifted uneasily, unwilling to believe that one of their own could betray them so utterly. But then the doors burst open, and a squad of UTF Marines marched in, a struggling figure held between them, it was Admiral Blackwell, his face twisted with rage and fear. Major Reeves stepped forward, his eyes hard. Admiral Vincent Blackwell, you are under arrest for treason against the United Terran Federation, he said, his voice ringing with authority. In the face of undeniable proof, the Council had no choice but to accept the truth. Blackwell was stripped of his rank and taken into custody, his schemes laid bare before all. In the weeks that followed, a tenuous peace settled over the galaxy, as the UTF and the Nijan Empire agreed to a ceasefire. Both sides were forced to confront the rot within their own ranks, the corruption and deceit that had allowed the war to fester for so long. For his role in exposing the truth and ending the conflict, Miller was hailed as a hero. The Council promoted him to the rank of Admiral and gave him command of the UTF fleet. It was a daunting responsibility but one he shouldered with grim determination. At his side stood Kyra, the Nijan rebel who had risked everything to help him. Though badly injured in the battle aboard Mira's flagship, she had survived, her will to live as strong as her conviction. Now she served as a vital link between the UTF and the Nijan resistance, working tirelessly to forge a lasting peace. But even as they worked to build bridges, a new threat emerged from the shadows. On a remote Nijian colony, a warlord named Zek had seized power. Once a loyal disciple of Mira, he now sought to carry on her twisted legacy. 
Zek had gathered the remnants of Mira's forces and begun to build a new army, the Sons of Mira. These warriors were even more fearsome than the Nigean nightmares, their bodies twisted by forbidden genetic enhancements. The Sons of Mira struck without warning, their attacks brutal and ruthless. UTF outposts and Nigen colonies alike fell before their onslaught, the fragile peace shattering like glass. Miller and Kyra knew they had to act quickly. They put aside their diplomatic efforts and began to prepare for war once again. Miller gathered his most trusted officers, Major Reeves, Dr. Chen, Lieutenant Commander Thompson, and tasked them with developing a strategy to counter Zek's army. Meanwhile, Kira made a daring gambit. She would infiltrate the sons of Mira, posing as a disillusioned rebel seeking to join their cause. It was a dangerous mission, but one that could provide vital intelligence on Zek's plans and weaknesses. As tensions mounted and the drums of war began to beat once more, Miller and his team raced against time. They knew that if they failed, the galaxy would be plunged into a conflict even more devastating than the one they had just ended. The fate of billions hung in the balance, and they would not let them down. Miller's jaw clenched as he studied the intelligence report Kira had risked her life to send. Zek's experiments had gone far beyond anything they'd anticipated. Telekinetic soldiers, psi warriors, he called them. Miller slammed the data pad on the table. The Invictus dropped out of hyperspace on the far side of the Nijian colony's moon. Miller, Lieutenant Commander Thompson, and a squad of UTF commandos piled into a stealth shuttle. Taro sat in the rear, shackled and sedated. They slipped past the colony's orbital defenses and landed in a ravine a click from Zek's stronghold. Miller led the way, assault rifle at the ready. The air smelled of sulfur and scorched metal. As they neared the compound, a shimmering distortion in the air was their only warning. A wave of invisible force slammed into them, hurling soldiers like rag dolls. Miller rolled with the impact, coming up firing. Psy warriors emerged from the shadows, eyes glowing with unnatural light. They moved with blinding speed, dodging bullets and returning fire with blasts of telekinetic energy. Thompson dove for cover, shouting into her comm, We need backup now. Miller gritted his teeth, focusing his fire on the nearest Psy warrior. The alien staggered but kept coming, flesh knitting itself back together before Miller's eyes. A lucky shot took the Psy warrior between the eyes. It crumpled, but two more took its place. Miller's team fell back, fighting for every inch. They took shelter in the wreckage of a downed Nigean fighter. Thompson slapped a fresh power cell into her rifle. We can't hold them off much longer. Miller checked his ammo. We have to, Kira's counting on us. Taro stirred, shaking off the sedative. Let me help. Miller eyed the Nigean warily. Why should we trust you? Because Zek is a madman, Taro said, his voice ragged, and I'm the only one who can counter his psi warriors. Against his better judgment, Miller unlocked Taro's restraints. The Nigean flexed his fingers and the air around him shimmered. Together they pushed out from cover, Taro deflecting the psi warriors' attacks with telekinetic shields. Miller and Thompson laid down suppressing fire, carving a path through the enemy ranks. They breached the compound's outer wall and fought their way into the central lab. Banks of stasis pods lined the walls, each containing a Nijian in various stages of genetic modification. At the far end, Zek stood before a massive viewscreen, watching the battle unfold in orbit. He turned as they approached, a cruel smile on his reptilian face. You're too late, Miller. My army is already on the march. The UTF will fall, and from its ashes, a new Nigerian empire will rise. Miller raised his rifle. Not on my watch. Zek laughed a cold hissing sound. You think you can stop me? I am beyond your feeble human abilities. The warlord's eyes flashed, and a wave of force slammed into Miller, driving him to his knees. Taro stepped forward, his own telekinetic aura flaring to life. You may have created us, he said, but you do not control us. The two Nigenes clashed in a storm of telekinetic energy, the very air crackling with power. Miller struggled to his feet, taking aim at Zek's unprotected back. 
but before he could fire, a familiar voice cried out, Peter, don't! If you kill him, she said, you'll be no better than he is. Miller hesitated, his finger on the trigger. Zek pressed his advantage, hammering Taro with a relentless barrage of telekinetic blows. Thompson tackled Miller out of the way as a stray blast shattered the viewscreen. Sparks flew and alarms blared. Taro rallied, throwing Zek back with a surge of desperate strength. The warlord stumbled off balance. Miller seized his chance. He launched himself at Zek, driving his fist into the Nijan's scaly jaw with a satisfying crunch. They grappled, telekinetic energy crackling around them. From the corner of his eye, Miller saw Thompson and Kyra limping towards the lab's control console. Taro was flagging, blood trickling from his nose as he strained to hold off Zek's attacks. Miller knew they had only seconds before the warlord overwhelmed them all. With a final burst of strength, he wrapped his hands around Zek's throat and squeezed. The Nijian thrashed, his telekinetic grip faltering. Miller held on, pouring every ounce of his rage and determination into his stranglehold. Zek's eyes bulged, his scales turning a sickly grey. A sharp crack echoed through the lab and the warlord went limp. Miller dropped the body, chest heaving. Peter! Kira's voice edged with panic. The reactor's going critical. Zek sabotaged the containment field. Miller stared at the pulsing reactor core, dread coiling in his gut. If it blew, it would vaporize the entire colony. He turned to his team, his expression grim. Get to the shuttle. I'll handle this. Thompson shook her head. We're not leaving you, Admiral. Taro stepped forward, his face pale but determined. I'll stay. I can use my abilities to buy you some time. He helped Kyra and Thompson carry the wounded to the shuttle. As the hatch sealed, he met Kira's eyes through the viewport. A lifetime of unspoken words passed between them. Then he turned and sprinted back into the compound, alarms blaring in his ears. He found Taro in the reactor control room, sweat beading his scaled brow as he fought to contain the building energy. I can hold it, the Nijin grunted, but not for long. You need to disable the reactor's magnetic containment field. That should trigger an emergency shutdown. Miller worked frantically, rerouting power and bypassing failsafes. The containment field flickered and died, and the reactor's hum faded to a low whine. Taro sagged, his telekinetic aura dissipating. We did it. Miller helped the exhausted Nijin to his feet. Let's get out of here before this place comes down around our ears. They staggered out of the compound, picking their way through the rubble and the bodies of fallen Psy warriors. The shuttle was waiting, its engines hot. As they lifted off, Miller watched the stronghold recede, the weight of the day's events settling on his shoulders. They had struck a blow against Zek's forces, but he knew this was only the beginning. The Nigerian warlord had set something far bigger in motion, and it would take all of Miller's skill and determination to see it through. He glanced at Kira, her face pale but resolute. Together they would face whatever challenges lay ahead. For the sake of the UTF, for the sake of the galaxy, they had to. The shuttle broke atmosphere, angling towards the distant glimmer of the Invictus. In the void beyond, the battle raged on, the fate of worlds hanging in the balance. The reactor core shuddered and cracked, spewing flames and molten shrapnel. Miller sprinted for the shuttle, Kira and Thompson close behind. Taro, slumped over Thompson's shoulder, groaned in pain. They hurled themselves through the hatch as the core detonated, the shockwave slamming into the shuttle. Miller wrestled with the controls, fighting to break free of the colony's gravity well. Explosions bloomed across the colony's surface, structures collapsing into rubble. The shuttle bucked and shook, alarms screaming. Miller gritted his teeth, pouring power to the engines. With a final wrenching jolt, they tore free, rocketing into the void. Behind them, the colony crumbled, flames devouring the remnants of Zek's twisted dream. Oh, we did it, Kira breathed, her eyes wide. We actually did it. Miller allowed himself a small, weary smile. Not bad for a day's work. Thompson laid Taro on a bench, checking his vitals. He's stable. 
but we need to get him to a medic ASAP. Miller nodded, angling the shuttle towards the distant flashes of the ongoing space battle. As they approached, his heart soared. UTF ships swarmed the Nigean fleet, Reeves's Cerberus at the vanguard. Zek's stolen warships listed and burned, their hulls shattered by missile strikes. And then a shadow fell across the shuttle. A massive Nigean dreadnought shimmered into existence, decloaking amid the UTF formation. Its hull was a jagged nightmare of black metal and pulsing red lines, easily dwarfing the Cerberus. No, Kira whispered, her face draining of color. It can't be. Miller, Zol hissed. I thought I smelled your stench. You've been a thorn in my side for far too long. Cold realization gripped Miller's heart. Zek had been a puppet all along, dancing on Zol's strings. The warlords rise, the attacks, all of it, just a ploy to bleed the UTF dry. And now, with both fleets weakened and vulnerable, Zol was ready to claim his prize. Prepare to embrace oblivion, human, Zol snarled. Today the Nigerian Empire rises again and your precious federation will be nothing but ashes. The dreadnought's hull split and shifted, immense plates sliding back to reveal a pulsing orb of plasma. Miller's blood ran cold. A singularity cannon, capable of wiping out an entire fleet in a single shot. Reeves's voice crackled over the calm tight with strain. Miller, get out of there, that thing's powering up. But there was nowhere to run. The Singularity Cannon thrummed with building energy, its light painting the shuttle's interior a hellish red. Miller's mind raced, options flicking through his thoughts. Ramming the Dreadnought would be suicide. Their weapons couldn't even scratch its shields. Unless... He turned to Taro, meeting the Nigen's pain-glazed eyes. I have a plan, a bad one. Taro bared his fangs in a weak grin. I'm listening. Miller outlined his desperate gambit, the words spilling out in a rush. Use their combined psionic power to grab hold of the cannon's plasma blast, wrestle it back on itself, force Zol to choke on his own weapon. One problem, Kira said, her voice shaking. The strain will kill you both. No mind can channel that much energy and survive. Taro pushed himself upright, his eyes clear and calm. Then I'll die stopping a monster. There are worse ends. Miller gripped the Nigerian's forearm, warrior to warrior. It's been an honor, Taro. Power surged through them, raw and scorching. They flew beyond the confines of flesh, soaring into the void as beings of pure thought. Before them, the Singularity Cannon pulsed like a dark heart, its blast building to critical mass. Miller felt Taro's presence beside him, a towering pillar of resolve. Together they reached for the seething plasma their combined will clashing against the cannon's awful might. The energy burned, searing through their linked minds, threatening to consume them utterly. But they held fast, pouring every ounce of their strength into the struggle. Slowly, inexorably, the plasma blast began to turn, fighting the cannon's pull, curving back on itself. Zol's dreadnought loomed before them, its shield straining against the redirected blast. Miller felt Taro falter, the Nigerian's mind starting to fray under the unimaginable strain. Hold on, Miller urged, gritting mental teeth. Just a little more. With a final wrenching surge, they forced the blast back into the Singularity Cannon. The orb shuddered, cracks racing across its surface. And then, in a blaze of light to shame the stars, it ruptured. The explosion ripped through Zol's dreadnought, tearing it apart from within. Miller and Taro rode the crest of the blast, twin sparks before an inferno. As the flames consumed them, Miller felt Taro's presence begin to fade, slipping into a darkness beyond thought or sensation. With the last of his strength, Miller hurled his friend clear of the maelstrom, back to the safety of his own mind. Then the fire took him and he knew no more. Miller awoke to the soft beep of a heart monitor, his body leaden and aching. He cracked gummy eyes, blinking against the bright lights of a med bay. Taro. The name hit Miller like a hammer blow. He lurched upright, ignoring the scream of abused muscles. The UTF and the Resistance have already started coordinating relief efforts, Kira said, her voice soft. Zol's death has thrown the Empire into chaos, 
It's a chance for a real, lasting peace. Taro gave us that. Miller nodded, not trusting himself to speak. The price of victory had been high, too high, but he knew in the marrow of his bones that Taro would have paid it gladly. A chime from his comms console snapped him out of his reverie. He reached for it, frowning at the blinking message icon. The sender was listed as unknown, the subject line a string of nonsense characters. Unease prickled down his spine as he opened the message. A single line of text glowed on the screen, stark and ominous. We are coming. Prepare yourselves. A chill settled in Miller's gut as he read the words, a cold certainty crystallizing in his heart. Somewhere out there a new enemy was stirring, one that made Mira and Zek look like children playing at war. Miller's hands shook as he read the message again, the words searing into his brain. A conspiracy, far deeper and more ancient than he could have ever imagined. The progenitors, an unknown race pulling the strings of the utf nagian war for centuries. His mind reeled at the implications. He slammed a fist on the console. Reeves, Chen, Thompson, Kira, my ready room now. The others filed in, their faces grim. Miller paced, laying out the message's revelations, the progenitor's hand in creating the war beasts, nightmares, psi warriors, meddling with the fate of trillions for their own ends. We have to stop them, Miller said, voice hard as steel. Whatever it takes. Reeves nodded, jaw set. I'm with you, Admiral, to the end. Chen and Thompson echoed the sentiment, fire in their eyes. Kira laid a hand on Miller's arm, her touch electric despite the direness. We're in this together, Peter. We'll find a way. Miller gathered his resolve, the weight of command settling on his shoulders. Then let's get to work. We have a conspiracy to unravel and a galaxy to save. Days bled into weeks as they chased down leads, piecing together scraps of intel. Ancient ruins, fragmentary records, whispers of a hidden stronghold, each clue bought in blood and sweat. Finally, a breakthrough. A set of coordinates buried in a millennia-old data cache, the location of the progenitor's base, a space station concealed in the uncharted void. Miller set course immediately, the Invictus surging into the abyss. Stars fell away, replaced by the endless dark of interstellar space. They were flying blind, sensors straining against the unknown. The Invictus shuddered, alarms blaring. Reeves cursed, hands flying over the helm controls. We've been pulled out of warp, some kind of energy net. On the view screen, a shape resolved from the void. A space station, immense and alien, its surface a mad tangle of spires and domes. The progenitor's stronghold. Miller opened a shipwide channel. All hands battle stations, we're going in. The Invictus surged forward, weapons hot only to be met by a swarm of drones, fast and deadly. They tore into the UTF ship, ripping through shields like paper. Kira's eyes snapped open, glowing an eerie blue. I can feel them, Peter, the drones. They're controlled by a single mind, a powerful psychic. Miller's blood ran cold. The Overseer. As if summoned, a new presence intruded on Miller's thoughts, vast and terrible. Greetings, Admiral, a voice like grinding stone filled his skull. Your journey ends here. Pain lanced through Miller's head, driving him to his knees. Around him the others cried out, clutching their temples, the overseer's psychic assault tearing at their minds. Miller pushed back, gritting his teeth against the agony. He reached for Kira, their thoughts intertwining, drawing strength from their bond. Together they shoved back against the overseer, their combined will a blade to cut through its control. The drones faltered, their formation breaking. Reeves seized the chance, plotting a breakneck course through the gaps. The Invictus hurtled past the outer defences, charging straight for the heart of the progenitor stronghold. The station loomed before them, a monstrous alien thing. Miller steeled himself for what lay ahead, the true face of the enemy at last. They docked with a shudder, the airlock doors grinding open. Miller led the way, rifle at the ready, Kyra and the others close behind. The corridors were dark and twisting, the air thick with the stink of ancient machinery. Zhao Shiver crawled up Miller's spine, 
a sense of being watched by unseen eyes. He pushed forward, following the tug of Kira's psychic senses, deeper into the heart of the labyrinth. They emerged into a cavernous chamber, its walls lined with pulsing conduits and glowing tanks. Within each a twisted form floated, hybrids of human, Nigian, and something else, something ancient and terrible. My God, Chen breathed, her face pale. The progenitor's experiments. They've been trying to create a new species, a perfect race to inherit the galaxy. Miller's grip tightened on his rifle, disgust and horror warring in his gut. The lengths the progenitors would go to, the lives they'd sacrifice for their mad ambition. A coldness stole over him, an alien presence intruding on his thoughts, the overseer its psychic voice ringing in his skull. You see now the futility of your struggle, it said each word a needle of pain. The progenitor's will cannot be denied. Submit and your suffering will end. Miller snarled, launching a psychic counter-strike with all his strength. Kira joined him, their minds melding into a single blazing spear of defiance. The overseer reeled, its hold broken. Miller charged, rifle blazing, his team close behind. They fought through waves of progenitor thralls, nightmarish fusions of flesh and metal, each blow a scream of defiance against the ancient evil. At the chamber's heart, they found the overseer, a towering figure in black robes, its face a featureless mask. It lashed out with its mind, hurling Chen and Thompson aside like ragdolls. Miller and Kira stood alone, facing the monstrous psychic. They poured everything they had into one final desperate assault, their minds and souls intertwined. The overseer staggered, its psychic defenses crumbling. Miller raised his rifle, finger tightening on the trigger, ready to end it once and for all. But in that moment, a searing pain exploded through his skull, driving him to his knees. The overseer, lashing out with the last of its strength, a psychic blast meant to shred Miller's mind to ribbons. Kira leapt between them, taking the brunt of the attack. She screamed, her body convulsing, blood pouring from her nose and ears. The overseer collapsed, its mind burning out like a dying star. Her eyes fluttered closed, her body going limp. Miller howled, rage and grief tearing at his heart. He held Kira close, tears streaming down his face. Chen and Thompson staggered to their feet, their faces grim. They'd seen the truth of the progenitor's plan, the horror of their ambition. The stakes couldn't be higher. Miller laid Kira down gently, brushing a strand of hair from her face. He straightened, a cold, implacable resolve settling over him. The progenitors had taken everything from him. Now he would make them pay. He led his team deeper into the stronghold, following the trail of abominations. They emerged into a vast domed chamber, its walls lined with stasis pods, each containing a twisted hybrid of human, Nigean, and progenitor. At the chamber's center, a withered figure sat enthroned, its ancient eyes glinting with malevolent intelligence. The progenitor overlord, the mastermind behind the aeons of suffering. Welcome, Admiral Miller, it rasped, its voice like dry leaves. You have come far and seen much, but you are too late. Our great work is nearly complete. Miller raised his rifle, aiming it squarely at the overlord's head. Your work ends now, you bastard. The UTF, the Nigeans, we won't be your playthings any longer. The overlord laughed, a sound like bones rattling in a crypt. Foolish human, you think you can stop us? We have shaped the destiny of world since before your kind crawled from the primordial ooze. Its eyes flashed, and Miller felt a pressure like a mountain bearing down on his mind. The overlord's psychic might, vaster and more terrible than anything he had ever faced. But Miller didn't flinch. He reached for the bonds he had forged, with Kira, with his team, with every soul who had fought and bled to bring him to this moment. He felt their strength flow into him, a raging torrent of defiance and indomitable will. Human, Nijin, it didn't matter. They were united against the darkness, a light to banish the shadows. Miller's finger tightened on the trigger, the rifle kicking against his shoulder. The overlord's head snapped back, Ikor spraying from the ruin of its skull. Around them the stasis pods began to shatter, 
the progenitor's twisted creations spilling out in a tide of shrieking horror. Miller and his team fought like demons, tearing through the abominations with bullet and blade. The stronghold shook, alarm screaming as the overlord's death triggered a cascade of system failures. Miller knew they had minutes at most before the whole place came down around their ears. They ran, fighting every step, the abominations dogging their heels. The Invictus loomed ahead, a battered beacon of hope. They hurled themselves through the airlock, Miller slamming the hatch shut behind them. Reeves was waiting, the ship's engines already spooling up. Cutting it a bit close there, Admiral, he said, a ghost of a smile on his lips. Miller collapsed into the command chair, his body aching with a thousand wounds. Punch it, Major, let's get the hell out of here. The Invictus surged away, the progenitor station collapsing behind them in a maelstrom of fire and twisted metal. They watched in silence as the ancient evil was consumed, a final pyre for a monstrous ambition. Miller felt hollowed out, scoured clean by the crucible of battle. Kira was gone, sacrificed to stop the progenitor's mad scheme. But her memory burned bright in his heart, a flame to light the way forward. There was still work to do, a galaxy to rebuild in the wake of the progenitor's fall. The UTF, the Nigians, they would have to find a new path, a way to coexist in peace after so many centuries of war and manipulation. It wouldn't be easy. There would be scars, old wounds that would take time to heal, but they would face it together, united by the bonds of blood and sacrifice. For now Miller let himself breathe, let the weight of command slip from his shoulders for just a moment. They had won against all odds. The progenitors were gone, their schemes unraveled. The future was unwritten, a blank page waiting to be filled, and Miller knew with a deep unshakable certainty that they would face it head on, ready for whatever challenges lay ahead. The Invictus set course for home, a battered but unbroken. Miller stared at the architect, disgust and fury burning in his gut. This ancient withered creature, so arrogant in its perceived superiority, had orchestrated the deaths of billions, all for the sake of its twisted vision. Kira's face, still and lifeless, flashed before his eyes, fueling his rage. You think you can play God? Miller snarled, his voice raw with grief and anger. Manipulate entire species like pawns on a chessboard? The architect regarded him with cold, calculating eyes. We are gods, Admiral Miller. The progenitors have guided the evolution of countless races, shaping the very fabric of the galaxy. And now we will create perfection. Miller's team fanned out behind him, weapons trained on the architect's elite guards. Reeves, Dr. Chen, and Lieutenant Commander Thompson took up defensive positions, ready to hold the line. Go, Miller, Reeves called, his rifle spitting plasma bolts at the advancing guards. We'll handle these bastards. Miller charged forward, his psychic powers surging around him like a crackling storm. The architect met him head on, their minds clashing in a blinding flare of mental energy. Visions assaulted Miller's consciousness, Images of a future where the progenitor's engineered race dominated the galaxy and the UTF and Nigenes were little more than fading memories. He saw worlds stripped bare, populations culled and subjugated, all in service to the progenitor's grand design. I you see the inevitability of our triumph, the architect whispered, its voice worming into Miller's mind. Surrender and your suffering will end. Miller gritted his teeth, rallying his psychic defences. He drew on the memories of those he had lost, Kira, Taro, Jensen, and so many others, and the bonds he shared with his team. Their strength flowed into him, a raging torrent of determination and defiance. With a roar of effort, Miller unleashed a devastating psychic blast, pouring every ounce of his rage and pain into the attack. The architect's defences shattered like glass, its mind laid bare before Miller's onslaught. The ancient being staggered, its body convulsing as Miller pressed his advantage. He tore into the architect's consciousness, ripping through layers of psychic shielding and memory, seeking the core of its being. But even as he pushed deeper, the architect rallied, its eyes glinting with cold malice. If I must fall, it hissed, 
then you will join me in oblivion. A klaxon blared, red lights flashing throughout the stronghold. The architect had triggered the self-destruct, a final spiteful act of defiance. Miller's head snapped up, his mind racing. The stronghold's destruction would incinerate everything within, including the progenitor's research and genetic samples. It was the only way to ensure their plan could never come to fruition. But his team was still fighting, locked in desperate battle with the architect's guards. He couldn't leave them behind. Miller, no, Chen shouted, her voice torn between fear and anger. We're not leaving you. That's an order, Miller snapped, his tone brooking no argument. Warn the UTF and the Nigeans, prepare them for any remaining threats, go. His team hesitated, their loyalty warring with their sense of duty. But they knew Miller was right. The galaxy had to be protected, no matter the cost. Reeves clasped Miller's shoulder, his grip fierce. Give him hell, Admiral. Then they were gone, fighting their way clear of the stronghold, racing against the countdown to destruction. Miller turned back to the architect, his eyes blazing with resolve. He reached deep within himself, tapping into reserves of psychic power he never knew he possessed. He had to contain the explosion, prevent it from spreading beyond the stronghold, even if it meant sacrificing himself. The architect lashed out, hurling bolts of psychic energy. But Miller deflected them, his mind an impenetrable fortress. He pushed back, pouring his power into the stronghold structure, willing it to hold against the coming cataclysm. Seconds ticked by, each one an eternity. Miller felt his strength waning, his body and mind pushed to their absolute limits. The architect's taunts echoed in his ears, promising despair and defeat. But he held on, clinging to the memories of those he loved, those he fought for. Kyra's smile, Reeves's unwavering loyalty, Chen's brilliant mind, Thompson's fierce courage. They were his anchor, his reason to endure. And then, in a blinding flash of light and searing heat, the stronghold vanished, consumed by the fires of its own destruction. Miller felt a moment of searing agony, and then, nothing. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.